After the DeButts family sold this land in 1843, it passed through a series of short-term owners over the next several decades. Meanwhile, in 1852, with the encouragement of Dorothea Dix, the federal government opened St. Elizabeth's Hospital to treat people with mental illnesses. The hospital, located only a few miles to our north, was the first large-scale, federally-run psychiatric hospital. To support the hospital, the federal government purchased the land on which you stand in 1891. This farm produced food to sustain the hospital, but also offered unique therapeutic options. It was decided to use farm work as a method of therapy for the patients. This offered a uniquely peaceful setting in which patients could work. Additionally, it gave them a tangible goal to accomplish. The work had a noticeable reward, food production which was of value to the larger community. Some of the patients even lived in the building formerly known as Mount Welby, under the watchful eye of the farm caretaker. From the business perspective of the hospital's operation, it provided free farm labor, too. This was a major improvement from previous standards of mental treatment. Dorothea Dix, noted advocate for better mental health treatment, described some observations of other types of care she had witnessed. One subject chained, and one in a close stall for 17 years. One, often doubly chained, hand and foot. One man caged, comfortable. One, often closely confined, now losing the use of his limbs from want of exercise. The insane are disadvantageously placed in the jail. In the almshouse, two females are in stalls. In wooden bunks, filled with straw, always shut up. One of these subjects is supposed curable. Dorothea Dix knew there had to be a better way to treat people with mental illness. This land represented one of the great experiments to find that better way. Here, selected patients could work the land outside, unchained. They could accomplish important tasks and stimulate their minds and bodies. Their rooms had no bars or restraints and the hospital in many ways benefited at the same time. This farm was highly productive. It not only served as a home for horses, cattle, pigs and chickens, but it also produced alfalfa, timothy hay, sweet potatoes, carrots, beets, turnips, asparagus, eggplant, pumpkins, rutabaga, fruits and honey, in addition to eggs and meat from the animals. Now, as an operating government farm, the DeButts Mount Welby was renamed Godding Croft, after St. Elizabeth's superintendent at the time, Dr. William Godding. Dr. Godding stated his belief. There is no question about the value of labor in the treatment and care of the insane, and the varied work of a farm and garden seems admirably suited for the employment of many whose disease is of the chronic type. In 1893, Dr. Godding noted the transformation undergoing on this land as Mount Welby became Godding Croft. The old manor house and barn there have been renovated and occupied. A new shed has been built for the shelter of young stock, and the fields are already taking on something of the aspect of a well-ordered farm. There is abundant road-making clearing and grubbing up that will afford an opportunity for all the winter labor that can be made available for years to come. It will come more and more to depend on the labor of the inmates, and in the end there will be found no more slightly or pleasant pastoral region, no fairer outlooks, no spot better fitted to bring content to darkened minds, this new domain named Godding Croft. New buildings were constructed including the hay barn at which you now stand. The patients worked two to three hour shifts, twice a day, challenging and developing their mind in a home-like atmosphere. It was an exploration in justice for a class of people so long restricted to perpetual injustice. Walk now to your final stop outside the visitor barn. 